Hey guys, what's up Advanced 3D Art? Um, so we're getting into exactly what I said we were going to get into. Um, we're going to go ahead and start right on the curves and surfaces. Um, I'm going to start off by showing you the main thing that we're going to use, the most, like, in my opinion, relevant thing. Um, I haven't really seen anybody use curves uh, for anything other than this, but we're going to have to learn everything uh, about the curves just because of the test. Um, but I'm going to start off with something that's a lot more applicable to you and something you'll really get and you'll, I feel, will be able to use it in your modeling and every day, like when you're making wires and cables and um, thing, s sort of cylinders that need to bend properly. This is how you make them. So we're going to go from the poly modeling tab, which you are probably currently in. We're going to spawn a cylinder down because in this case we're making a wire. I'm showing you guys how to make a wire, uh, like phone cord or just any sort of wire really. And I'm going to plot, uh, go ahead and just put my cylinder here for now. And what we're going to do is we're going to get the curves and surfaces tab. And we're going to go to this tool that's called the EP curve tool. Um, this is just the easiest one to use. You can use like the pencil curve and you can draw it if you want. I just prefer the EP curve because it uh, drops points and then builds its own curve based on those points. So I can if I'm using a reference, I can select where there's major bends in the wire that I'm, I'm using as a reference and make my wire based around that. And it pretty much does a good job at uh, getting there. So after you make your wire, however you make it, I'm just making this a little simple one. I'm going to hit W to get off that. And now I have my curve. So this is now a curve in my, it's, it's not made of geometry. It's not made of anything. It's just a curve. It's weird. And what we can do from here is take this uh, cylinder. I'm going to go ahead and delete everything except these front faces here. So we have this disc. And as usual, we're going to hop over here to the poly modeling tab so we can center the pivot, delete the history, and freeze the transforms. And from here, we're going to go ahead and snap this to a 90 degree. So I held J for that. Um, and we're going to line the center of this up right here with this curve as best we can. There's not really a way to snap to it um, that I really know of. Um, it may There may be a new tool that allows you to snap to it, but it really doesn't take you long to just line it up using your eyes. Because even if it's not completely straight, it's still going to work the way it, it, it's supposed to. It's just lining it, lining it up makes it better on you. So something that we're going to have to do uh, in order to extrude this cylinder along this curve is we have to not select the object. This is where I always used to forget when I was first learning this. You don't select the object and then click this. You have to go to face mode and you have to select the faces or edges you want to extrude. In this case, we're extruding by faces as you normally do. And with this selected, we hold shift and then click our curve. And you see, it allowed us to select the curve even though we were in face mode. And that is one behavior that curves have is no matter what mode you're in, you're still able to select curves because they, they're they used to manipulate geometry in ways that faces and edges and things like that aren't. So from here, we're going to hit the hotkey for uh, extrude, which is control E. Uh, if you guys are still uncomfortable using hotkeys like that, we can go up here and hit the extrude button and it'll automatically do that for us. And as you can see, it didn't follow that curve, but instead what it did was uh, it went to the end of the, of the line here. Okay. It went to the end of our curve that we drew and what we have to do to make it truly follow the curve because it doesn't have enough geometry to bend is we have to add that de uh, geometry with the divisions. So we just add as much geometry as we need to make that curve look good. And from there, we're cool. Um, I probably should have, I'm going to redo that uh, with a better cylinder for you guys. So we have a better, uh, something I can show you a little bit better with. So all I need to do is pull this in. I'm just changing the radius of uh, my, my starting faces. And from here, I'm going to then do that, press control E. And from here we can add more divisions and you can see how well that bends. We, we would of course have to come in here at the end and uh, 
I would go ahead and rotate this to make it suit that better. But you can make pretty much any shape using this. So if we went in and we got the curves tool and we decided we need, it has to be painted on the grid though, as you guys can see. If we do it out here in space, it paints, it paints really odd. Like you don't really, that, that painted on the grid level, but it doesn't go, it can't go out in space, like out there. It has to be on the plane right here. It's always the points of the EP curve tool are always drawn on zero origin of uh, Y. So that's a pretty easy way to do that. Um, there's a lot of stuff you can tweak after as well. Um, and as usual, you have to delete the history and center pivot and all that stuff when you're selected with the object. Otherwise, the curve tool would still have control over that. And when we would delete the curve tool that we just deleted now, uh, it would snap this object right back into shape. And sometimes it will crash Maya because it'll like collide. It'll implode the whole object. It's crazy. So I'll do one more for you guys just so you can see what we can do. Because we can extrude all sorts of stuff over this thing. It doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be a uh, cylinder at all. It can be a cube. So I'm going to go ahead and pull out cube actually I'm going to spawn a plane in so we don't have to make our own so I'm going to go ahead and select oh that's cube the plane I'm going to pull it this way I'm going to reduce that geometry because we don't need all that I'm just going to make one flat plane one by one and I'm going to make it much smaller and I'm going to line it up with the end that my curve is going to go And you'll see here that we don't have to get it perfectly centered. I'm just going to get it in the rough center of my plane. And from here, we take all the same steps. I'm going to go ahead and shrink this one, though. We go to face mode, select the faces, hold shift, click the curve. And from here, we can click control E, or we can select our extrude tool. And it'll jump to the end, just like that. And from here, we have to add divisions to smooth out that transition. You can also, uh, I think for some reason this caps out at 25, you can go in and change it manually to like 100. And by then, you can tweak them how you feel. Okay, unless Maya wants to be rude. Okay, Maya. Oh, and you do want to keep faces on. There we go. So I think you have some control here after you're done with how uh, how the ed how the faces bend towards the end, as you can see here. See how that face is uh, doing some weird stuff. Uh, this allows you to kind of make a contorted. Ooh, that's so gross. If we had more geometry here on the lines, though, I think we would eventually be able to make a like a twisted thing. Let me see. Yeah, the geometry is not liking that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, see how it's twisting there? If we had more geometry, it would come out better, but we would probably be able to get a pretty good twist. But there's also a tool for twisting, so don't feel the need to try and twist it using an EP curve. But there you guys go. It's how you extrude along, uh, along a curve. So if you guys have any sort of shape that you're trying to turn like say you're trying to make a picture frame and it has to be made out of a cylinder. Instead of trying to build it, you could try and use an EP curve if you felt like it. Or, you know, I don't know. Whatever you guys find a use to do that with, that's exactly how you do it. Uh, remember, I'll always be in the help channel. Um, this is the first advanced video, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. These are probably going to be a little bit shorter because we're going to be mainly focusing on tools. This one's longer because I'm just talking a lot. <laughs> Um, I hope you have a good one. Uh, please, if you notice somebody is not in the classroom that is an advanced student, uh, hit them up. I'm going to be like uh, sending them emails and stuff, and we're going to try and get everybody in here so we can actually get to work. Thank you, guys. Take it easy.